on this episode, Head Empty, No Thoughts. We continue our campaign against the Jedi. Sexy sex. <laughs> as our plans come together. We have recreated excellent. Woo! Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDiss Academy. Welcome to our continued advanced shmup tutorial. We're doing some advanced shmup. We're making our own Excel right now. I don't know if you saw this, but yeah, we, we, we're doing it. We're doing it. So we're creating like this template for our external editors and to kind of create like a baseline um, template. We decided to recreate um, Excel and it's going well, right? We uh, can select individual individual uh, cells and we can enter those cells and start ed 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 entering numbers. We can enter even negative numbers. So this is cool, this is cool. However, um, there is a glaring problem here and that problem is that we cannot add new elements. We can just uh, edit existing tables in the sense that we can edit individual cells in those tables, but we cannot add new stuff. Um, however, we have made some tremendous weird work at, at, the, at the beginning of this of this arc, where we did, don't just draw a table to the screen, but we take a table and we turn that table into a different table, and when then we draw that table to the screen, and that seems like was like a like a weird. A middle step that didn't make much sense but today today is where that step totally pays off and absolutely makes sense okay so first of all I want to add an ability to just I want to add a line I want to add an entire line to our table how are we going to do that well something I thought is that well if we're gonna add lines we're gonna probably add lines at the end that's usually how it goes. So it went in the pre previously with this um, with this specific table, which is a table of sprites. So how about we put down there? We just put a button that says new line or something. They just like add a new line, right? How about we just introduce a new button? And we can totally and very easily do that now. So we're gonna go <clears throat> into the update function. Um, update tab, I mean. And then we have, um, is it update though? I think it might be draw actually. Yeah, we have the refresh table thing, which I'm not sure if it actually fits into draw. Uh, we can delete this, this is no longer necessary. Okay, so here we're, so we where we're recreating this, we're creating like the second in mid step table, this menu table that contains, actually just right now just contains, it's just like a copy, more complicated copy of our original data. But something we can do now is we can do, once we're done with all this stuff, once we're done with all this stuff, we can add, add menu, comma, we can add a new button, the new cell, right? Um, now I have to think about where to add, like first of all, we can, we can put some text in there. Let's put the text, let's just make it plus. Let's just make it a plus. It's just a single plus. Just a single innocent plus. Um, then, then I'm gonna do a command, which is, let's call it new line. Um, we don't need a cmdx and cmdy for this one, um, but I do maybe need a width, uh, which is gonna be just like this. Um, and now we need an X and Y position. This is this is a bit awkward now. This is just like uh, okay. Let's 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 just copy this stuff over. Um, J. J is going to be just one. So it's going to be uh, ten plus fourteen. Uh, so it's going to be just four. I think. I think. Um, y. It's gonna be just the number of lines we have, right? So it's gonna be just hashtag data. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Hashtag data, there we go. So it's gonna be hashtag data plus one, like this. I think something like this. Let's try that, save, run. Uh, 
Something went wrong. Something, what did went wrong? First of all, I didn't see anything. Ah, I know the problem. Because um, the problem here is that this menu, that's a two-dimensional array. So we actually have to add a whole new line uh, with that button. So we have to put that into its own array, right? Because we cannot just put like a button in that, that menu array because that's an array of arrays. So we have to create an array within the menu. That's why we need an additional curly brackets. And within that array, we can put a new button if you want to create a new line. So let's try that now. And there it is. That's a little plus there. Ta-da! So now the idea is that we can just press X here and it will bump, it will create a new line. Uh, let's, let's make that possible. Now we can just easily do this. That's so nice. So now in the update function, here's where we're pressing the button uh, and here's where we're checking like if it's edit. If it's edit in this, uh, else, else if, uh, and if it's new line, Then, so if the button is supposed to add a new line, then what we do is um, data, add data, uh, maybe uh, yeah, an array of arrays, right? So something like this. No, we just add an array. And then we're just gonna go, go a six to six in there. <laughs> Always has to be sharks to sharks. I think that's how it works, right? No, I, th I think it, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I think it needs to be area of arrays, right? So like this, I think it's like this. And I think that might be it. Let's see, let's, let's see how, how that works. So we, again, we're gonna go down. So maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's like this after all, let's try that. Okay, okay, I just I just outthink myself. I was outthinking myself. So now now we can add checks to sharks to our <laughs> our table. So that's really nice. So this allows us to add an entire new line. And of course 66 makes no sense. Let's just make it zero. Um, in fact, for this specific table, it might be a good idea to just add four um, entries. Is it four? Um, actually six entries might be might be a good idea. Um, something like this, I think. Um, because uh, we always have at least six entries. Like this, the simplest line that we have um, for this specific, for this specific table, for this specific system, is six entries. So, like, uh, if we add a new line, we should always populate maybe an entire line. Is what I'm thinking. Good, job's done. Job's done. <laughs> so let us now think about how we're going to add individual cells. Because what you see is that sometimes in the specific table, sometimes we want to have a seventh and sometimes even an eighth entry. So how are we going to add individual cells? Well, we can add, we can apply the same uh, trick. Uh, I want to just add a single plus button at the end of each line. And that plus button will allow us to just extend each line by one additional cell. Let's try that. All right, so here when we're generating the, the line, uh, something I can do here is I can go, um, I'm going to loop uh, until data plus one. And then if J is equals data plus one, then else. So if we, um, if the cell that we're trying to add is beyond the number of cells available in our data array, then that's that's the special button. Otherwise, we just add you know the set cell as usual. But here we're gonna add. Uh, we're gonna use this. Um, add L and E. Actually, <laughs> might have should, might should have added maybe the other one. So um, yeah, I'm gonna add a new cell in here. Just removing the curly brackets because we're not adding the entire array now anymore. And then the text is going to be also plus, um, and then it's going to be not going to be new line, but new cell. Mm, the position is uh, going to be the same thing as here. We're just going to copy this thing over. It's just the same. And, and that, that's that's it. That, that should be it. So you can see now every line has a plus at the end. 
I have to say, I don't like that. I don't like that every single line has a plus. It's kind of like adds a lot of pluses. It would be maybe nice if um, this was something that is only applied um, for the cell that is currently selected. I think that's, that's a nice little detail. So maybe let's try to do that. So let's go something like, um, um, if j equals cur x, I mean, we can, this, is, this is a bit of a hack, but let's do, let's just do it. Then, so we're gonna go local uh, line max. This is kind of like the, the target value for our, for our for next loop. And usually it's gonna be data and a number of, of entries in that, that cell. But if, uh, if j, no, 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 wait, 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 it's here. We have to put it here. If line max, uh, line max is a, like a helper variable and we're gonna set it to the length of entries in, in, in the current line of data that we're drawing. But if uh, we are on the line that is currently selected by the cursor, uh, in this case, uh, we're gonna go line max plus equals one. And that's it, that's all we do. So you can, that didn't change anything. Oh yeah, yeah, because we have to put here line max in here, in the J uh, loop, line max. And that didn't work either, oh my gosh. Oh, it's not cur x, it should be cur y. And it's not j, it's i. <laughs> okay, there we go, there we go. Now you can see there's this little plus that is following our cursor. And yeah, that's good. That makes sense. So we can select it, um, but we don't have a plus on each individual, in each individual line. That's, it's kind of like, I think that makes more sense. Um, this will break if we add more additional elements on top or something, but but I think the, like as a little hacker Rooney, it's, it's okay. And we have to say like, this is generally like tools don't have to be robust. It's just important that they're easy to expand with additional elements. And that's what we are accomplishing here with this menu. Array. It's easy to just add more elements, more buttons, and add functionality to, to our menu. Okay, so now we have this new cell thing, and now I want to actually make it do something. So again, we're going to go, go here. If the command is um, new cell, then we're going to add... Now we have to actually think a little bit about where we're adding things. So. Um, so we have my menu here. So we're gonna go, we're adding to data square brackets, my menu dot, um, cmdy. And we're adding, um, we're adding just a new little number in there, right? That's the idea here, right? So we just add a shark to shark in here. Uh, <laughs> there's just one thing I, I need to make sure, and that is when we are adding the new cell thing that should also remember at least the CMDY value. I think that's important. Um, CMDX doesn't, we don't need to remember because that's necessarily a new cell that we're adding here, but yeah, we do definitely want to remember CMDY. Okay. Sexy sex. <laughs> that worked. Oh. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is cool. Um, something I would maybe do, I'm thinking about doing something here. I don't like how when I move the cursor, like let's just imagine myself situation. I want to add a new sprite, all right? And I'm gonna have to go like, and now I can add a new sprite. That's a lot of clicking, right? It would be nice if it would, would loop through. Um, so that's not something I wanna do. So uh, instead of the mid here, uh, we do, we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna do cur x. Is it, is it, is it modulo plus one? Yeah, I, th I think it is. I th I, I'm not sure if it, it's, it's module plus one. Let's let's just see if it's module plus one. Just, just, um, no, it's not module plus one, plus one. It's minus one modulo plus one. I think it is. Let's, let's try that. 
Yeah, okay, that's good. So now we're looping sideways all the way through. So uh, if I want to jump add immediately if I'm here and I want to immediately add a new cell, I can just press left and that, that allows us to go to add a new cell. And we're going to use the same formula to, um, to scroll X. No, 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 not scroll X. Um, to um, curl Y, curry. Uh, we're going to do curry curry hashtag menu like this so now if i press up i'm down here <laughs> the scrolling takes a little bit maybe we should um maybe we should make the scrolling go faster Even faster, four, let's go four, whatever. <laughs> yes, this pleases me greatly. Okay, let's just add a bunch of 66, 66, 66. <laughs> okay, so now sideways scrolling is too, too slow. Let's go, let's go faster. Um, 66, 66, 66. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having too much fun with this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go sideways growing, which is slower. Good. So now we are having the opportunities or the abilities to add new columns and new lines or new cells and new lines. That's good. Let's uh, turn off maybe the 66. The 66 was just to, so I can see the difference, but actually I'm not interested that much in 66. I'm not interested in 66. Um, Oh, there we go. Uh, let's let's remove this. That's okay. Zero is fine. So just as we have like a whole bunch of zeros in here. But you you now we have a bit of a problem, and that is what happens if we accidentally add something. It's like, oh no! I didn't want to add the zero. I mis misclicked. Now I want to remove the zero again. How do I do that? Right. Um, yeah, it's difficult. We could maybe come up with some kind of um, menu, like so maybe if you press the other button, maybe like a sub menu pops up or something. We could have a minus button there that just like removes this the last entry. That's that's fine too. Um, I think something that that might be might be just like uh, easiest. Uh, it's maybe a bit hidden, but it's I think it's like um, makes sense from like a instinct point of view. It's just to make it part of the type in stuff so if i um we had this at the beginning when we're typing in we're pressing enter and if what the text that we are trying to type in is nil right then we reset it to zero um but maybe what we should do is like if we just typed in nothing if we, we just like deleted everything it's just all empty text that we typed in in this case i want to actually remove the cell uh, that, that communicates to me that, ah, yes, the, 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 the user wants to make that thing go away, right? There is a bit of a problem here, however. We have to be really careful here. Um, our system is not really well equipped. Our system is not really well equipped with um, arrays that might have gaps. It's, it's absolutely possible to set a gap in an array, right? We can, we can just do that <laughs> just to see how that works. So let's, so let's say data uh, to two equals nil, right? We, we can do that. We can set a, somewhere in the middle of an array, we can set an entry to nil. And that just causes errors. It's <laughs> just like not good. The system doesn't like that because all sorts of bad things happen. You try to draw something on the screen that doesn't exist because it's kind of weird. We have something there, but that something is nothing. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Don't want to have a situation where that ever happens. Um, so I want to also avoid uh, the user um, to accidentally create this kind of situation. Um, so if we do this, uh, we want to delete the cell only if this is the last cell in the array. Okay, so let's, let's try to figure this out. So if type text equals nil, uh, and we're going to go if, um, my menu 
dot. Uh, what is the CMD? CMD X. My menu is CMD, CMD X. Equals. Uh, hashtag data data uh, my menu cmd y so if this is the last entry if we are editing the last entry in this line then and in this case i just want to debug this out debug last okay i just want to <laughs> I'm just really nervous because this is like, like really weird stuff. Okay, so let's try this. Let's remove this. That was the last one. Uh, now let's try to edit something that's not the last one. Oh, now we don't know that. Um, let's, let's. <laughs> oh man. Like this, okay? This is we're adding uh, last. Okay, so we're uh, editing this. That was the last one. We're editing. Uh, we're editing this. That's not the last one. Okay, that's good. We're editing this. That's the last one. Okay, so that's for something I wanted to do here. Um, now, if this is true, and also I want to make sure that... Um, see, the thing is like the nil is being returned if I type in some text uh, or if the text was empty, right? Um, but actually I, actually, I only want to remove a cell when I actually deleted everything in that cell. Um, so maybe we want to maybe check for that, if that cell was actually completely deleted, like if the text was completely deleted. So let's do something like local type val. Uh, and then if type val equals, like val equals nil, and then we put not the type text, but type val into this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, uh, now we can actually check if type text was, was actually empty. So if uh, this is true and type text equals nothing, then, then we're doing something. Then we, we're deleting the, the last cell. Otherwise, we're we're cool we're cool cats we're good so, okay so this is now where we're deleting stuff delete the cell um so how we're we going to delete the cell where well we're gonna go del i from um this thing comma um, CMDX. Easy, easy, Febreze. Um, I want to maybe. I don't. I don't want to give up this anymore. I, I will. There, there. I'm probably sure that something will be visible, but also I don't want to continue all this stuff. So then I'm gonna go uh, UPD equals UPD table and return. I don't like the doubling here. I don't like the doubling here. But I don't like this. So I think this might be fine. Um, okay, let's try this. So it worked. Oh my gosh. <gasps> <gasps> it's working. Does it work here? Oh, oh, oh. Something, something went wrong. Something went wrong. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, we want to set the type well always to zero if it was nil. Good, 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 good. Oh, type val take text. Okay, okay, got it, got it. I think now, now it's. Uh, I just misspelled that variable. <gasps> it works. Oh my gosh, it works. It totally works. Good. I wonder what happens if we delete the entire line here. Uh. Are you ready? Oh. Uh, okay. 
So this also answers, you know, how we're gonna apply um, this effect, how we're gonna delete an entire line. The way I want to do this is like, if I want to have here where we're deleting the individual cell, we wanna make sure that if it's, this was the last cell in that line, then we're also gonna delete that entire line. Um, so here, um, where are we doing this? this? We're doing this here, delete cell. So we delete this and then we're gonna go if, this uh, no actually we can we can be much much simpler but than that we can just do check for this if this was one if the cell that was deleted was cell number one then that means we also need to delete this entire thing so we're gonna go delete um, del i Del i, again, I, I don't know if we did this, but I think we did this, uh, it deletes uh, the index of a certain array. Um, so it, it's uh, instead of deleting and uh, like supplying uh, an element of the array and say like remove that element from that array, um, it says like remove the element that is on position <laughs> on that array. And, um, and that's also something that we're gonna do. So we're gonna delete from data um, this element. Is what I'm thinking. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that. I'm eager to try. Delete, 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 delete. <gasps> it worked. It actually worked. Oh my gosh. So what happens if you delete one in the middle? Because I mean, we sh should allow this, but also I'm a bit ambiguous about that. I mean, it does work. It does work. There is still maybe one last thing I wanted to do today. And that is, um, it's kind of important to know which number line we're on. I think that's a maybe good idea to know, right? So it would be maybe nice if we have a like column on the left side that tells us, you know, the number of the line that we're drawing here. And yeah, we can totally and very easily do this. Let's, let's try that real quick. So, um, 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 so here, right here, we'll be drawing the data. Uh, before we go through this loop, we're gonna go add ln e, and it was, we're just gonna add another another little UI element on the left side of each line that will just display the uh, it will just display the line that we're in currently. So here, add line um, txt is gonna be. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be this should be the line, right? So it's gonna gonna be uh, J? No, it's gonna be I. Um, with it's gonna be let's let's set it at three. I think we might have hundred hundred elements very easily in some some of these. Um, the command is gonna be nothing. Um, no command Y. That's not not necessary. The exposition is gonna be. I'm gonna use the same thing. It was four here, right? Uh, so it's gonna be four, and this is gonna be it is gonna be staying the same. Something like this. Um, here, uh, however, here, I want to make a little, little difference here. Um, this is, needs to be J plus one. We have to move everything one to the, to the right to make space for that uh, line description. Um, and here as well. And I think here as well. Yeah, so it's going to be um, 18. So now we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. So that's kind of like the number of the line we're currently in. Um, now there, there is now no, no this, see now when we're adding a new line, actually it might be more useful to have the plus not on actually on the on the line numbering. So back to four. And actually let's let's just make it three wide. So it's in line with the rest. Yeah, see, now we're, now this is like this really nice white X uh, plus button here. There is a, I, I want to maybe tweak this a little bit so because I don't like how I cannot distinguish the contents from the labels. So it would be nice maybe if the labels were, were uh, look different. 
Uh, and also another thing I want to do is I don't want to be able to select the labels because right now I can select the label. And I don't know, that feel, doesn't feel right. So maybe we're going to make sure that we cannot select them. Um, that's something we can do easily. First of all, let's let us do the layout stuff. So um, here, uh, something we can do uh, is we can do like C equals I'm gonna not gonna make it like this color, but we're gonna make it maybe like color five. So the labeling is a little bit darker. And then we're when we're drawing these cells, C equals um let's grab that. Why am I not grabbing this e earlier? So um C equals my menu dot C or seven. No 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 what are you what are you doing? My menu dot C or seven. So this will grab the C value for that my menu um, object. If it's not set, then it just re defaults to 13. So now you can see we have like labels and the labels are different colors and that makes it very clear what's the content and what's not, con not the content. Uh, now I want to make it so that uh, I cannot select them. And uh, this is something we're gonna do an update function here. Um, uh, it's gonna be here in a cur x. Uh, I think it's minus two, plus two. I think that that's, that's just should be enough. I think minus two, and then let's try that minus one. Yeah, that works now. So now we cannot select this the first entry in each line, but I think that might cause. Some, ooh, yeah, yeah. This is a bit of an issue here. Oh uh, man, we now see now every time we get to an exceptions, it gets a bit funky. You can do it like this. Um, if cur e is smaller than smaller equals hashtag menu, then else cur x equals two. We just make an exception for the. Uh, what, what the, what, the, what, what? Oh, it should be one. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm still thinking in terms of data, but uh, I have to look, make sure if you're in the last line of the menu, then I want to uh, just set set it to the plus button. And yeah, if I add another line here, then it fills the entire line. I'm, I changed my mind on that, by the way. I changed my mind. I don't want to add an entire line. I just want to add one additional cell and then allow my future eye to fill those cells manually. Um, the reason for that is I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried that if I add the plus in here, then I might do that accidentally and then deleting is kind of like difficult to do. So I want to make the undo as, like, as easy as possible. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, this works. So now we have basically recreated Excel. <laughs> we have recreated Excel, woo! <laughs> One more thing, I'm not exactly sure about the, the coloring. Maybe we can try some different coloring on the on the descriptions. Um, let, me, let me see, uh, maybe instead of the five, maybe instead of this color, how about we got gold pink? That's, that's kind of a funky color. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe, how about maybe some, some other color? Uh, nine, let's try nine. This feels a little bit too attention grabbing. Nine, nine feels a bit too attention grabbing. What about six? I don't know, I'm not sure. And we could also change the color of the background, by the way, that's also another possibility that we have. Uh, what about one? This very dark color. Oh, that's a little bit too dark, but maybe two. Okay, okay. Now we have the um, we have the dark red background, so that kind of already makes it so that it's transparent. No, that green is, is definitely just too weird. What about four? Uh, just like very specific. I think two might be might be okay. Let's keep it for two for now. Uh, but yeah, it's up to you. You can also maybe make the background different and so forth. Uh, it's it's fine. I'm 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 just like you know just setting up some some basic uh, some basic editing stuff. And you know what? We're kind of finished. We're kind of finished. We have successfully recreated 
Excel <laughs> in Pico 8. But again, that's not exactly what we're going for, right? We actually want to create a, like a custom editor for the sprites. And so far, like this, this doesn't seem like a huge advantage uh, compared to Excel. Sure, you can just easily export this uh, and that will speed up things for sure. Uh, ex in Excel, we would maybe have to copy and paste and stuff like that. So, okay, so that, that is a slight speed up. But now I think we need to take advantage of the fact that we are actually in Pico 8 and, and actually create like a custom bespoke editor where we can actually see the sprites that we are editing. But that's something that comes up in uh, the doggy zone. Let's go to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So the doggy zone. The next challenge is now, um, you see, I have created this, this um, state machine. Uh, I have like this uh, update table thing here, right? That is kind of like the mode of the editor when it's in an Excel mode. I want you for the doggy zone, I want you to come up, at least come up with a layout, an idea, sketch out an idea for a UI to be able to edit the sprites, to so actually see the sprites and be able to see like, I want to edit the sprites and these are the numbers I want to change. I want you to at least draw it. You can like come up with a layout that seems good for you. That's the first challenge. The second challenge is obviously trying to actually implement it. Use the tools that we have available to create that mode. And just like you would have to have a draw that mode and update that mode. And instead of launching the game into draw table and update table, you would launch it into that other mode. And uh, yeah, you would able to edit the sprites and so forth. That's, so that's gonna be the challenge for the doggy zone. Create the actual editor <laughs> now based on this template. Yes, and also at the end, as always, I will say a big thank you and huge shout outs to all the people who are making this show possible, who are supporting me on coffee.com slash lazydeaths. And as always, I also wanted to read out some comments. So this one is from BCUK in episode 17, and they wrote, I wouldn't see the original cow design as a failure at all. In fact, I prefer them to the less uh, characterful ones you ended up with. Uh, the original designs match more closely to the overall cute them up aesthetic you seem to be going for. Um, this is a tough comment. This is a difficult comment to address. Um, if you like the other cows, that's fine. There's two things I want to discuss. First, I want to make a certain distinction between two different terms. And then I want, also want to uh, offer a different perspective on this entire problem. So I think it's important to distinguish between, you know, the quality of a drawing and the style of the drawing. I would maybe agree that the style of the initial cows maybe fits a cute. There is a way of fitting that better to a cute aesthetic. If it is like a very colorful, cartoony kind of situation, then a more cartoony cow definitely makes sense. And yes, the previous one were certainly cartoony, but I think drawings also have some something I would maybe call quality, like quality of execution. And there are, something might have a, the right style, but might be a crude execution of that style. And I think the, personally, I thought the cows from the beginning were a crude execution of that style, style in the sense that they were kind of like misshapen. They didn't really feel well proportioned. Um, and the color choices were very, they're, they're, I put a lot of colors in a very, very small sprite and that made that sprite just difficult to visually parse, visually read. The second cows, which were more realistic, also had a more clear contrast and more focused uh, visual design that I think was clearer to read as a cow than that first cow. And that was something that I that I valued a lot. That, so that was my first argument for using that second cow. The second argument for using that second cow is that just because you are using a cute em up aesthetic doesn't mean that every single thing needs to be cute them up. It doesn't mean that everything, every single thing in that game needs to be cartoony and so forth. I think um, sometimes you have cartoons where there are some crazy characters that are really weird and they mixed up with more realistic looking things. 
and that makes those cartoony wacky things stand out even more because you see realistic things next to them, right? I mean, it's not necessarily like a great movie or anything, but something like um, the Sonic movies where you have like a crazy cartoony <laughs> little 3D thing, uh, but compared to that next to that are realistic things, right? That makes Sonic stand out because he's just a wacky character, cartoony wacky character that doesn't quite fit into this world and makes him more colorful, more vibrant and more fantastic. And also a little bit more funny, like you, because everybody is playing it straight, but then you have like this wacky character doing weird things. And um, so I think like sometimes it's good to have a mixture of more realistic things and more, more crazy things. And in this specific case, I kind of like how, you know, it's all about the cows and the cows are kind of like straight and super realistic and there's the wacky aliens happening around them and wacky fighting like the, all the other stuff is crazy but the cows themselves are like you know playing it straight and that makes like i think the the action around them more crazy and outrageous so that was my perspective on this i like this comment very much because it made me actually second guess my decisions and um, made me understand the game i'm working on better Yes, yes, yes. So we are basically finished with a template for a base template for an editor. Next episode, we are actually gonna make the sprite editor. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.